I'm trying to resolve in my mind these two issues of abortion and IVF. I understand the premise. If you start with the premise that life begins at conception, then it certainly is reasonable, I suppose, to follow that through to the conclusion that no abortion is warranted and to want to overturn Roe versus Wade, which is what one group of thinkers in this country arrived at. But then for the same people to say, well, I'm all right with IVF, seems to me to be inconsistent. Because we know during the IVF procedure, we run the risk, if not the reality, that there will be embryos created that will not be implanted. So is this the end of a life? How can you reconcile those two positions? I find it difficult, very difficult. Professor Sneed said we're going through a work in progress since Dobbs. It sure is a work in progress when you hear Dr. Denard and others misheard describe what they've been through. But it's a work in pro progress that I think is fundamentally ignoring the obvious. Ms. Rivera, this notion of personhood, how would you describe it? Thank you for your question, Senator. I think you're absolutely right. Um, these reproductive health issues do not exist in silos. And the problem is that if you define, um, if you define fertilized eggs, embryos, and fetuses as legal persons with independent rights, it's gonna affect everyone. It's gonna affect abortion, it's gonna affect access to IVF is going to affect contraception, and it's going to affect the quality of health care that pregnant women and pregnant people are entitled to. So you're absolutely right. So they wanted to overturn Roe versus Wade to take away the right of a woman to decide to end her pregnancy. Now there are some who want to outlaw IVF and deny a woman the right to start a pregnancy. The common notion here is the woman is just a vessel, is not a participant in this decision-making process, either for her own health or the future of her own family. Dr. Denard, is that what you discovered? Thank you so much for bringing this up. When I was pregnant in my state, I felt exactly how you describe. I felt like a vessel. And when I looked up at that ultrasound screen and saw that I was growing a pregnancy that had no skull or brain, but had no way of making any decision on my health, it's exactly how I felt. And that's exactly how my patients feel when they are in similar situations. We have lost our ability to make any decisions about our bodies, and it's harming women, and it's harming families. There was a report on National Public Radio just yesterday that, quote, uh, said the dangerous disruption of standard of care of preg pregnancy in the state of Louisiana in wake of the Louisiana abortion ban. The story noted that women in that state have been forced to undergo a cesarean section when their water breaks early in pregnancy before the fetus is viable instead of receiving an abortion procedure or a medication, which is standard medical practice. One doctor explained the C-section was done to, quote, preserve the appearance of not doing an abortion. And even more galling, the patients aren't even given a choice. As I understand it, a C-section is much more serious and not a safe procedure as ordinary vaginal abortion. Equally troubling, the NPR story reports that OBN, OBGYNs in Louisiana are now delaying routine prenatal care until patients reach 12 weeks a serious deviation from standard medical practice. Can you speak to how these restrictive abortion bans affect the ability of OBGYNs to practice a standard of care that you learned in medical school? Thank you for this question. At this point in my state, I feel like Ken Paxton himself is standing in each and every one of my office rooms when I see patients because now Individuals are having to change the way that they practice medicine. Individuals are having to change the way that they counsel patients due to all of the fear that has paralyzed our care. So much so that women who are living in Texas and other states where abortion bans exist, their lives are at stake and they are not receiving the same medical care that individuals are in states where the restrictions are not so severe. There are so many 
rippling effects of this. There have been migration of physicians to different states. Patients have been abandoned in certain states because of this. And we're losing physicians that have the ability to do procedures, including abortion care, because of these restrictions. Senator Graham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 